think we're ready. We've got stuff everywhere. Oh, I should take this off. Well, hello. Welcome to Charlotte's house. My name is Charlotte and I am coming to you from the shores of the south arm of Lake Charlevoix in East Jordan, Michigan, which is in the northern lower peninsula. Um, about an hour south of the Mackinac Bridge or four hours north of Detroit. Take your pick. I have lots to go over today. Lots of uh, videos to edit in, so this will definitely be testing my <laughs> uh, <clears throat> very elementary editing skills, but we will get through it, I'm sure. I have, I have a, uh, working with a new dog trainer and um, for the Labradors, and uh, so they've had their training this morning and they've been outside to play. It's snowing and blowing outside, so they got to roll around in the snow and do their thing. So hopefully we won't have the mouth rustling that happens on every single episode, apparently. But, uh, oh, yeah, so you can see. Oh, see everybody's nice and calm at the moment. I'm sure there will be barking, uh, because if you've watched before, you know that Sky, the yellow Labrador, barks every time a leaf blows by. So anyway, wow, I've got a lot of things to talk about today. Um, we'll do knitting first. Okay, we'll do knitting first and um, we'll do yarn first, I suppose. And then we will do some, um, I've got a couple new colorways, well not new, one is a re-dye and one is new, colors for Roberta Ray Fibers. And um, we'll stick to the yarn stuff first. So finished objects, works in progress, um, new yarn, and uh, some acquisitions, I guess. One was a Christmas gift, the other was on my list and uh, it was overlooked, so I got it myself <laughs> afterwards. But anyway, so there's that, and then you can kind of see peeking out <laughs> right here, some sewing, oh, yeah, and I'm wearing my pink shirt. Okay, so let's get started. I've got layers on, like a thermal, my mom gave me a thermal tank, so I've got that on a long sleeve t-shirt, and this, which is a thicker Oxford, kind of like an Oxford cloth cotton. And oh, for working the dogs and then running up and down the stairs, and I had to, I was trying to use my daughter's child size mannequin for my dress, but it just was not working. So I had to go downstairs, get my big mannequin, we're having a San Pellegrino Momenti, lemon and raspberry, and my fancy paper straw. Okay. Okay, finished objects for yarn. So we're going to do yarn. Oh, so we're going to do yarn stuff, sewing stuff, and then gardening stuff. Uh, this year is probably going to be a lot of gardening, and I'll go through all that and what the excitement is for me <laughs> with the garden this year. And um, so that's one of the reasons why I thought I really need to change my name because uh, when it was the Freshwater Fibers podcast, the assumption is, well, fiber of course includes sewing, but then I was really restricted and then, well, should I be showing my garden? But now that I've changed my name, you're welcome to my house. This is everything that I like to do. So it's, uh, I feel uh, less constricted as far as the topic. And it's pretty much uh, as a creative, if you're a creative today, this excites you. Tomorrow, something else excites you. And then you go back to the first day and then you might do the next day three more. It's, you're all over the place sometimes if you have multiple interests like I do. So by changing my name to Welcome to Charlotte's House, I get to cover 
everything. So, and if I gave you an, a rough outline, I don't even make a list. Everything is piled around. So hopefully I don't forget anything. Um, but at least if I give you an outline, if you really don't care about gardening, that's at the end. Whatever. So there we go. So finished objects <clears throat> for knitting. I finished, oh, I didn't bring up the pattern, but I've shown it to you before. The snuggle is real. I finished this for my husband for Christmas. And I am very happy that I was watching the grocery girls and uh, Jody made this and she's the pattern says that from one edge of ribbing to the other so from here to here is supposed to be 13 inches and if you see the pattern it is like just solid stacked roll of yarn well and it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. It just depends on what you like. And I figured, you know what? My husband is not going to want 13 inches of cowl shoved under his chin. So I took her uh, lead and followed her lead and only did the pattern for, for eight inches. So um, here, I'll try it on for you. So this is how it looks at eight inches instead of, I mean, 13 inches, so like another five, <laughs> five inches. Oh my gosh, it's huge. So even if I made one for myself, I would definitely do this, 13 inches. Um, but everything else is to the pattern. This goes all the way through, so if you do want to really snuggle, you can tie that if you'd like. I'm very happy with it. I like it. Uh, skein yarn and West Knits bicycle in gray. Oh, I had, no, I have it right here. I have a basket <clears throat> and I just took some things out, but podcast basket. So let me see. Yes, okay. Oh. We got all kinds of things to talk about. So yeah, this is how much yarn I have left. So really, I don't know. I don't know if there's enough to make a hat. I don't know. Oh, look at the hair. Woo! It's snowy and blowy today, so I've got that northern Michigan wind blown look. <laughs> okay, so this. And this was yarn from my stash. I have been majorly, majorly stash busting. Yep, so skein yarn, uh, uptown sock, very, I had to get readers, and uh, I didn't bring those over to the podcast. Very cherry. So, Skein yarn, very cherry. Honestly, this is the perfect spot to podcast because the lighting is awesome. So there we go. Very cherry, skein yarn. And there's quite a bit left. I am, I'm getting, acquiring quite a bit of scraps of sock yarn. So the plan is to really stash bust and hold it double and do a granny stripe blanket. Oh, and then the uh, Stephen West, West Knits, West Wool. West Wool, bicycle. This is batch three. If you, on the label, uh, Canal House is the color. Beautiful, beautiful, fuzzy, charcoal gray. Really nice gray. It almost has a warm, it looks pinky, but it's not really, but maybe that's why it went so well with the skein yarn. And then the inside, the pattern calls for mohair. Not for my husband. So, um, I mean, not that he wouldn't wear mohair. I'm not saying that it's just for him. There's no point in using expensive mohair. <laughs> he is not mohair worthy. I'll put it that way. So, 
He hasn't even worn this yet. I, he opened it and he kind of went, so no, I did not use mohair on the inside. Uh, this was a uh, sock weight from my stash and I just used that single. The pattern wanted you to use mohair double. Again, if you've been watching me for a while, I take uh, yarn instruction, not the instructions, the uh, recommended yarn in a pattern as a guide, as a suggestion. <laughs> so, yeah, I would recommend it. Um, if you don't really want, I mean, if this is good enough for you, do eight inches or go for the whole 13. I mean, that'll be all the way up to here. Anyway, so the snuggle is real. I think it's Max the Knitter. So the yarn turned out very pretty. Handsome. Okay. So we got that done. I was working on um, Norwegian mittens. Oh, I do not. Yes, I do. And so this pattern, <laughs> wow, this pattern is from Arne and Carlos. I participated in Knit Stars 3.0, which was the Nordic, I think was the theme, Nordic knitting, color, Fair Isle knitting, maybe it was the theme, I'm not sure. Arne and Carlos were one of the designers. I mention them almost all the time. Um, and so here is the pattern. And this, here they are. There we go. So they're very cute. Backside. They're a lot of fun. I love the detail on the thumb. They fit well, and I have larger hands. So, and I used a uh, traditional Norwegian, well, I don't know if it's traditional, but it's Norwegian wool, and it is, there's one that I haven't opened yet, Rauma Strikgarn. I know it's close to German, but it's not pronounced exactly like German because it's Norwegian. So Strikgarn, something like that. Uh, three... TR, I don't know if that means three ply, probably, um, in the white, and obviously blue. Mm. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's in Norwegian anyway, so white and blue. <laughs> and. I would recommend them. Of course, you can't, you cannot get this pattern if you did not buy, participate in Knit Stars. It's the, are they're on 4.0 now, or maybe 4.0 is coming, or it's already out. I think it's already out, but I only did the one because I was interested in the uh, color work and Fair Isle knitting, so that's the only one I've done. I think 4.0 they went to Argentina. It's either South America or Argentina is their theme for 4.0. And I'm working on a second pair. And I did order the yarn. Oh, I can show that. I don't think I've showed that yet. Maybe I have. I don't know. Um, I did order yarn for this. But the second one, I was in a... Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Fiber Share. It is a, not necessarily a club, it's a sharing program where you sign up and there's a questionnaire, your likes, your preferences, your dislikes. Do you want an international or domestic partner? Um, and 
and I've always gone for, I think I've done it four times, and I've always done international. Uh, I want to try new yarns. I like to uh, learn about where this person lives, what kinds of things are popular to knit where you are, what yarns are popular where you are. Um, so I've always done international. And they match you up with a part, two partners, actually. Uh, you do not exchange with the same person. So the person I sent to is different than the person that sent to me. So you get to meet two new people, make new friends. Um, most of the people I have kept in touch with and we Instagram and, and share stories. I did meet one of them when I went to, it's a person I sent to, she was at Edinburgh Yarn Festival and hosted a meetup one of the nights at a local restaurant in Edinburgh. And so my friend Geraldine and I went to her meetup. So I got to meet her and we got to meet all these great um, other uh, knitters. Uh, she had a friend from Spain who I am friends with on Instagram and we chat once in a while. And, um, and her name was Lika and not Lika. She, from Raquel is from Spain, but my meetup partner that I sent to was Lika, and then um, her friend from uh, Holland was there, and there were a bunch of other people, but you know, in a group setting at a restaurant, you pretty much only talk to the people next to you. But it was great, I highly recommend it. You can do domestic, yes, it's more expensive to do the international because shipping a package from the United States costs as much as your package. I mean, it's ridiculous how much shipping is. But anyway, I do. I didn't do it the last couple of times, I don't think, because um, I'd done other things with my knitting money. So you choose. And anyway, so one of the, f all of that to tell you where this yarn came from. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, um, a, lady that was put, sent to me on one of the previous shares uh, lives in Norway and so she sent me Norwegian yarn. So this is, I don't have the label, I, this one did not have a label, but it's Norwegian wool and it's, I'm assuming it's the Rauma because the other stuff she sent me all had the Rauma label. Um, this is much, this has got to be fingering weight because it is thinner than this one. So I'm making another pair of mittens, same pattern, and I'm using this held double, white, and really getting crazy with it, this color. So making mittens with all three colors, and started these last weekend. Um, I went with my daughter to Tennessee for a campus visit at the University of Tennessee. So this was my airplane knitting. And this is what I have so far. So I, as you can see, the, um, I've got the white where the white is in the pattern. I'm doing gray for the red and I'm doing just the star in the terracotta color. Actually, I thought it was more bright orange when I ordered it, but it's really terracotta. Anyway, it looks really sharp with the gray and the white, I think. And then you can see there's a spot here. There are four, well, three little rosettes. You see those three little dot things there? The white on the inside, I'm doing with red, or the orange. So, yeah. I only have one of these so far. And then I realized, and I had quite a bit of yarn left over with these. You start with a, th I'm, I'm gonna give you the needle. It's the needle gauges on the intro to the pattern anyway. Um, and these have been steam blocked, um, which I really like, I've never done before. I really liked it. I started doing that with Arnie and Carlos. I made a number of Christmas balls. I was gonna do a podcast before Christmas. I was gonna show you the Christmas balls. I'm gonna show you my quilt that I did finish and give away, but that'll be one of my sewing inserts later. Um, it just never happened. Never happened. Anyway, um, th 
three and 3.5 millimeter. Well, so I did three for the ribbing and I have no idea why I only went up to a 3.25. I have no idea why. And so that's why I'm thinking they're a little snug. So for these, I'm using the 3.5. So it'll be interesting to compare how much of a difference you get in size. Um, anyway, but end of February, I should be able to podcast again or record again. And then I'll fill you in on why I'm making these mittens. Because there is a reason. There is a reason for my madness, and they fit just fine in my uh, Fat Wilco Knit Night Clutch. So I love this, and then look at the inside has orange. I love it. So cool. Okay. So that's done. I can put that over here. I should have one basket here to what I want to show and one basket here when it's done. Um, okay. So there's that. I'm pretty sure I would have shown. Okay. Now. So my clipboard. My other... Mm, it's finished, but it needs slight adjusting. A lot of things last year needed adjusting. So 2020 is going to be the year of just finishing it, <laughs> hopefully. Um, so you know I've been working on, did I start it last time or did I just show you the yarn? I don't think I've started it. So I finished a sweater. This, I showed you my color choices for this. That's right, because I was stash busting and I couldn't decide between the blue and the pink, so that's when the pink went into another sweater and this one was the blue. Now it's coming back to me. So um, here are some more views of Le Pouf. This is by um, Beata of Beata Jezik of Hedgehog Fibers. All of her patterns are free on her web, I think you have to go to her website. I think probably on Ravelry too, but her website. Um, so free pattern, which is awesome. And let's see, for those of you that like the nitty gritty details, four millimeter needle throughout, she does not change for the ribbing. She says five, well, let's see, I made the medium. So five skeins of uh, 100 gram sock yarn in whatever color palette or whatever you wanna do. And so that's what I did. Started out with five skeins. Okay, now you may recall this from Little Taylor S was my first yarn. Well, as you can see, it's not in sweater form. It's still caked up. And I started it and there's nothing wrong with the yarn. There's actually nothing wrong with the yarn. It's beautiful yarn. It's soft. It's extremely soft. Um, but as I was knitting it, I just could not do the mint, the peach, the pest. I just, I couldn't do it. Every row and the colors were building. They're very pretty. And you know what they remind me of? My grandmother always had um, those little pillow shaped chalky mints, these exact colors. And she always had them in a dish, a little crystal dish with the lid out in the in the living room by the Davenport. <laughs> is that just a Midwest term? So anybody who knows what a Davenport is, raise your hands. <laughs> Thumbs up on the video if you know what a Davenport is. 
Nobody uses that term anywhere, but my grandmother's generation sure did. Anyway, I couldn't. I absolutely, I, I was just like, Grr! with every row. And that, there's no point in that. Why would you make a project that makes you cringe every time you have to do another row? So, here it is. Um, that was supposed to be my very first color in the fade. So Little Telleress, this was a yarn club, so I don't think it's a color she carries all the time. It's 80-20 superwash merino with nylon, high twist, uh, 400, 400 meters per 100 grams. If this color is your jam and you're screaming at the screen or sighing and ooing and eyeing and say, oh my gosh, I would love that yarn, and if you have something that you think I would like, based on what you've seen me use, or you'll see what my color choices are for the pink sweater, I'm happy to trade. So if anybody would just be beside themselves to have this yarn, let me know and let's trade a skein of sock yarn. So that one was out. So then I started over with the next color in line, which was Yarn Cafe Creations Ocean Mist. Well, here. Uh, Ocean Mist. 7525 Superwash Merino. And this is all I have left. Okay, so that was number one. Oh, I wish I had, wish I could line this up on a little table so you could see it. All right. Then the second color was, where's my tag? Was it Life in the Long Grass? I've got three of those tags. Okay, yes, Life in the Long Grass. However, do I know which color it is out of these three? No, you'd have to go back to the first video. Life in the Long Grass, your choices are Astral, <laughs> Gaia, Gaia, G-A-I-A, -A, and Sfe sorry to spit on you, Spera, Spira, S-P-H-A-I-R-A. Life in the Long Grass, <clears throat> Sock Singles, 100% Superwash Merino. Okay, and that's all I have left of that one. Yep. Okay, then the third color was the Mystery Yarn from my stash. This is probably, I'm pretty sure this when I first started to crochet nine years ago. This was the very first hand-dyed yarn that I bought at a yarn shop. That's all I have left. Then, oh, nope, sorry. I had two, so I had it divided into two. Because you hold these double. So that was hell, okay. Then another life in the long grass. That's all I have left of that one. Then, I showed you the other life in the long grass, the darkest of the blue, uh, peacock, turquoise, whatever you want to call that. I decided, well, because she goes really dark, and so I decided, because one, two, three, four, five, this was my fifth color, and I really wanted it to be dark. So, I... As a dyer myself, I took the Life in the Long Grass yarn, the darker blue, and over dyed it. So it still has the blue coming through, but is much darker. And that's all I have left. <laughs> and, okay, remember, did, if you watched the last episode and I tried on the cropped crocheted sweater, <laughs> 
Okay, next time I give you a, uh, a lineup of future projects and one of them is a cropped sweater by a very petite designer, stop me. <laughs> I tried this sweater on and it was, it was ridiculously short. I, I would, and actually I do want to find a sewing pattern and if any of you are sewers and you have a recommendation for all these cute dresses you see people wearing with their soldatna cropped sweaters where it's the high-waisted dress and the skirt comes out I, I would love to have a dress like that but without a dress like that I am NOT wearing a belly sweater <laughs> and that's what this turned out to be it was, and and I realize I have long arms it says, after when you're doing the sleeves, you, uh, and this is a top down sweater, you go so far for the yoke, divide for the sleeves, and keep going. So, when you're doing the sleeves, she gives you a sequence. This is a free pattern, so I can tell you. Um, she wants you to do the increases eight times. So after eight increases, she says in the pattern that it should get you to your wrist bone. And then you can decide if you need to add some more length or, um, and then she also says, please check your sleeves after the seventh increase. If it is close to the wrist bone, just omit the last increase. I am not kidding. I put the sweater on, so here's my elbow. <laughs> the last increase, the seventh increase, was right here. That my wrist bone, and I'm assuming she's talking about this thing right here, it came to right here. <laughs> no more patterns by petite designers. I don't know. So. Obviously, I did not have enough yarn, and then I thought, well, uh, do I make it a three-quarter sleeve? And then I'm like, this is just ridiculous. So, <clears throat> I showed it to you before. Nope, that's not it. I had dyed some yarn for Roberta Ray Fibers called Soot. So I took that, over-dyed it, so here's the color in front of it. This is what I over dyed and used another skein. And this is what I have left. But I will be using this. So let me show you the sweater. I have to back up. La la. So here we are. Very happy with it. In the end, it. Um, actually, I probably should just put it on for you so you can see it. Okay, let's do our usual costume change. It, oh. Well, I'll show this to you later during sewing. Okay, so, now, put this one on. Okay, so it has, let me get my shirt out of the way. Okay, so overall, very happy. Um, and also, you can see that if I had stopped with this color, it would have been way up here on me. So, like, you know, that wasn't, I, mean, I guess it's okay. I guess it's, it would have been all right. And I would wear a shirt under it anyway. I'm really not a person that wears. I like it. Don't 
get it out of the way. So I'm very happy. It has not been blocked yet, as you can see. Ends are everywhere. Um, so yeah, so let's show the sleeve. So, and it is a bell sleeve, so it's, she wanted that, as that's popular right now. So if I had, oh, I bought, I placed an order with Espas Trico a while ago, and I ordered two packages of these brass uh, light bulb stitch markers. And then uh, they arrived, and I thought, well, that was silly. Why in the world did I order so many of those? How am, when am I ever going to use this many stitch markers? Well, I did. <laughs> this is a full two packages of stitch markers for the light bulb stitch markers. But anyway, so what I did is I marked where I started a... So you can start to see where... Uh, so this is the first color. You start top down. I um, used the first color until I did one row along the front here under the collar. Then uh, dropped one strand, picked up one strand of the second color. So here you can kind of see it fading. This marks where I used two colors of the, the same yarn, two strands of the same yarn. Got about two inches worth. This marks where I dropped one strand, picked up one strand of the second. This marks where I went. And I did this because I wanted, I did the body first. And I did this because I wanted my stripes to match. So I wanted to know where did I start, how many rows. And I did nine rows of holding two colors together on every single section. That's nine rows. And then, um, because I was doing the body first, and I think in the directions, she says, if you want your shoulder or your sleeves to match, use 50% of your yarn on the body and 25 and 25. And then I also figured out by weighing, you know, every single time, uh, the section where you used one strand of two colors was used up four grams roughly because they'd be different with, this is a single ply, this is much thicker, but anyway, it works. Four grams, so I had, I knew out of the 25, I knew, because I'm trying to use up my yarn, and so I knew that I needed four grams for the marling part, and then I could go up, use all my yarn until I had four grams left, and then do that. So that's how I kept track of that, and I mean, it worked. I think, yeah, worked really well. But I had to add a sixth color in order to get the sleeves long enough. And there's still, it's okay. I mean, I'm fine with it. There's my wrist bone. So with ribbing, <laughs> after eight increases, and so there's my last, where's my last increase? Right here's my last increase and I did one extra so this increase right here was supposed to be your wrist bone according to the pattern I anyway not a problem we made it work not to fear we made it and I used this trusty little pocket scale highly recommend one of these you can get it probably just about any any online place, and that's how I would weigh everything. Um, oh, by the way, did you know <laughs> the scale doesn't work when you're in a car? <laughs> I never thought about that before. Uh, I, you know, obviously you're, I guess you're grab, I don't know, things change when you're in motion. Physics was not my thing. So, take it from me. I didn't try it on an airplane, so if you're flying, let me know if the scale works, because then I'll know what project to pack for my next trip. <laughs> hmm. um, okay, so because I have this much of the final color left, I'm going to um, weigh it, divide that in half. I am going to extend the ribbing on each sleeve 
equally. Probably another inch. I should be able to get another inch. You're supposed to do two to two and a half, but I wasn't sure how much I would have. Um, so, but yeah, so that's why there are five gazillion light bulbs on here. I'm very happy with the sweater. I look forward to, we're going to Florida for spring break, so I look forward if it's cool enough at night or if we're sitting outside at a restaurant to wear this with some white jeans or white shorts. Uh, so yeah, le poof. And all of this yarn, well, unless you, this, this was in my stash technically, but only because I dyed it specifically to make that other sweater, remember? And then a squirrel went by and I got distracted by other sweaters like this one. So I used one of those, but everything else was from my stash and that's all I have left. Woot woot. And uh, yeah, so these besides, these will all go towards a granny stripe, stripe blanket. Maybe that should be marled. I don't know, some sections could be. You can make it whatever you want. Okay. Hands down, absolute favorite circular needle, chow goo. Um, that's it for finished objects. So, yep, works in progress. I showed you the mitten. My, oh, let's talk about that crocheted sweater. Right over here. Recognize the fabric. This is also a fat wool co bag. Okay, so if you watched the last episode, you saw how tailored the sweater was, fitted and short. So I took the bobbles off and and yes, Sky, thank you. Thank you for the kisses. Okay, somehow my hook is completely missing. And I got a metal hook this time, which I don't really care for metal. I prefer wood. Okay, so yeah, 10 millimeter. I had wood. Okay. So, took the bobbles out. I added five more rows, did the bobbles again, and it was still like an inch from the top of my jeans. And I was just like, this is not gonna do, and it was still super tight. I was, and the pattern, um, Um, I showed it the last time. It's from um, uh, I Love Crochet magazine. I get the digital issue. And um, I don't know if I have the name. I took pictures of the pattern. No. Anyway, I'll link it down below, of course, but it is in my last podcast also. There are only two sizes available. Small, medium, large, extra large. Well, I'm pretty much a medium large. It's not, small is too small, extra large is too big. So I took the whole thing out last night, redid it, and um, I'm actually already, I should be able to finish this today, I already am at the point where I add work on the body and I went up and I'm doing that large, extra large. So, we'll see. Um, so, here it is so far. Large, extra large. Hopefully this will fit much better. 
I am going to um, add six rows this time because I really don't want it to be long, but I don't want it to be up here either, which again, it's another crop sweater. Why am I making crop sweaters? I don't know. Because they look so cute on the model in the picture, and then I tried to wear it with jeans and it's like, eh eh. <laughs> so again, the whole reason of making this in the first place was, I love this color, was to use up my stash because I had all this yarn left over from the fitted dress. And um, of course didn't have enough so I had to buy two more. But it's inexpensive and not a problem. And so looking forward to that. So that's the status update on that. Fat Wilco bag. So that's that work in progress. That's it for knitting for today. Okay, so let's, I still plan on casting on the dog walker will be my next cast on once I get this taken care of, um, finish my mittens, yeah, then I'll be ready to go for another big project. Um, Dog Walker by Plucky Knitter. I showed this to you last time. And again, all of this yarn was from my stash. So let's say six skeins for this project. Two, did I only use one each? I had to go into the second gray. So um, three skeins. For that one we won't count the mittens because I ordered yarn for that so there was a six seven eight nine skeins gone used and here we go now because I had to add yarn for the sweater and this next the dog walker has a big collar I've, add, I've got nine skeins of yarn again all from my stash Okay, hang on. Okay. I'm chewing on one of these, like from a top of a coffee bag, those foldable clasps. No idea where they got it. Okay, so I added two skeins because five would definitely not be enough, and I'm going to make this sweater a little larger so it's not baggy, but you know, it's meant to be a little bit bigger of a sweater. So I've got nine skeins. Hopefully that'll be enough. Um, so I showed this one to you before. Uh, Primrose yarn. I added, no. I might have added this one, Garn Stories. I love Garn Stories, one of my favorite European dyers. I added this one. I think this is a skein yarn. Some single. This would have come from a Stephen West. I would have, I think I bought this one. This one came from a Stephen West yarn along. Another skein yarn from the same yarn along. Oh, here we go. No! This one, Primrose yarn, so I added this one. Uh, I've got big hands, but I <laughs> we'll see how we'll see here. Well, kind of. Um, I added this one also. I love this yarn. I've ordered two of these Hula Hut yarns. Love that one. So that's going to be next. What I'll probably have to do is lay all these out. Whoops. And do a picture so you can see. But there's one and two. Okay, so that's that one. Um, this was the uh, one I had already. So there's Garn Stories. So if you're interested in trading yarn with me for the little Taylor S, <laughs> 
okay. If I think I need it. Oh, here, this is the soot. Roberta Refiber soot. So this is what I over dyed to get the sixth color for this over oh, right here. That's what I over dyed to get this on the end. So it started with this and ended up with that. So if I need to, I can put that in. And then this is a mystery yarn. Um, it's charcoal -y black, but it has like a pinky. There's a maroon. Now what are you eating? Stop eating things. So, and then that'll go there. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hopefully, this will be enough. Um, held double. Probably, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if two finger weight yarns equal a worsted. I'll probably do the Aaron weight instructions. That way it'll be a nice, it'll be a thicker fabric as opposed to if I followed the worst weight directions, it would be a thinner fabric, I'm guessing. Um, and I want this to be cozy and warm and substantial. So I'm excited. And I have not skeined these up yet because I wanted to show you, but this will be my next sweater. And I very well may skein these, or skein these up, uh, cake these up because I need them in cakes in order to hold the yarn double because I you pull one from the center and one from the outside to hold it double. So the outside, one from the middle. And um, it's been killing me to wait for you because I want to use my Christmas presents. It's been driving me nuts. It is a dream. Can you even hear it? No, you hear my dog sniffing through all my yarn. So this was my Christmas present. It is amazing. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful pleasure to use. Okay, no, you cannot have my yarn label. Out! She took that from the middle of the ball. Go. Get out. And my Swift, which is the standard low-cost uh, balsam wood type Swift, uh, the um, if you've used one, you, when you open it up like an umbrella, the, there's a screw that screws in to hold it up. Well, that was uh, um, no longer held anymore, like it, the hole got too big or something. So you had to physically hold up the umbrella of the Swift and then do this on the other side to skein up your yarn. So I waited till after Christmas and I got the amazing ball winder, but I, what I really needed was the Swift. So I got this one. Can you hear it? So, and these pegs Move. I think this is the large, and I got the large um, ball winder, also from Fiber Artist Supply. Um, this just sits on your table. I was really worried. I thought, there's no way this is going to sit still. It's going to get pulled because the other Swift clamps onto the table, but nope, it doesn't go anywhere. It has uh, nice rubberized feet. Highly, 
highly recommend. And again, this is the large, I think, or medium. They do have a smaller one, which I'm assuming the arms would be smaller. So, I, you're welcome. I waited all this time staring at these new toys so that I could show you my yarns in skein form first before I cake them up. So, that'll be next, is to cake all of these wonderful things up. So that was exciting, and I'll just show you. So let's see, so there's nine, six, nine, so 18 skeins of yarn out of my stash. So I thought you can add one skein. <laughs> this one, I just, I love self-striping self yarn. Freckled Whimsy does an amazing job. As a matter of fact, peppermint mocha. Oops, there we go. Um, did she do? Watch, she didn't do peppermint mocha. Did Freckled Whimsy do peppermint mocha? It's on my last episode, I'm sure. Um, anyway. She had another striped yarn on her Instagram. I get sucked in Instagram ads all the time. It wasn't an ad, it was her post. But anyway, same thing. And um, so this is a 20 stripe yarn. Uh, she um, described in her post that she wanted to see if she could do it and it worked out. I loved the colors. It's uh, her whimsy base. The colorway is called First Time for Everything. It's a two-ply fingering, 80-20, superwash merino nylon, 400 yards. I just thought, and when you see her post with the stripes, I loved it. Loved it, loved it. So that will give me another opportunity to perfect my personal sock sock pattern. So as far as knitting acquisitions, the gift, the ball winder was a gift. I bought the Swift and this yarn. So I think that was pretty good. Nine, 18 skeins of yarn. I could buy myself one. Um, and then the last yarn bit is I dyed a couple of colors for Roberta Ray Fibers. This one we have in um, MCN, Merino Cashmere Nylon. This is fingering weight. Uh, I believe it's, I can't remember if we do 80-10 or 75-25. Um, superwash, nylon, um, fingering, and this is Steel Fog. And, uh, really nice tonal neutral and then this one I'm not quite sure of the name uh, but this is also fingering um, same 7525 I don't know what do you think would be a good name um, ink blot I don't know Seems like a lot of people use that one. Newsprint. Um, I don't know. But yeah, those are all. So we got a bunch here. So I thought those were pretty cool additions. Oh, I was thinking um, Noki with Squid Ink for this one. Maybe. Oh. All right. That one fell. Anyway, so if you are interested, RobertaRayFibers.com. Okay. Let me look around. That is it for yarn. So we'll do some sewing next.
I sure hope I, uh, I did, because there's nothing there. It just occurred to me, did I hit record? <laughs> okay. Sewing. Oh, yeah. So, and I'm getting hot in the sweater with all my other layers on. We're getting, uh, it's windy and snowy outside. All right, so you remember when I made the shirt and the modifications. I added two inches, and I can tell you which pattern this is. I will have to um, look it up. So I've already made a gray one from a way earlier podcast, but it was short. So, when my mom was here, she helped me modify the pattern, and the, she said the bust starts were way out in the wrong spot. So, um, we added an inch and a half to the length of the shirt. I had already added two inches to the arm. And I think that was it as far as modifications. We, we moved this around so that the bust start would be in the right spot. And I love it. It fits fabulously. Um, you may recall in the last podcast I put the arms on backwards so the placket was on top of the arm. <laughs> I fixed that. And... Um, the only thing I have not done yet is reverse the button plackets, which I will do because they're, now they're in the right spot, but they open up the wrong way, which I'll fix it. I will fix it, but I love the fit. I did put the pocket, pocket on the wrong side, whatever. I don't have any more fabric, so I can't make a second one. Um, and I'm afraid that if I take this off, it'll be full of holes. So we'll just leave the pocket. But that's on the wrong side. Uh, and in order to reverse these guys, I have to take the cuff off, carefully do that, and then move the cuffs to the other side because of the button and the buttonhole. I suppose I could turn it inside out and just take, sew the button on the other side. Anyway, I'll figure it out. So that's what I have to do. But I'm very happy. Oh, you should see. Okay. Well, they're not mouth wrestling. That's good. And she's not eating anything. Okay, so. Definitely. And probably the only other thing I will add is another button right here. Um, I don't wear it buttoned all the way up, but for hanging purposes, I always button the top button and it keeps, I don't know, I think it just hangs nicer when it's open when you keep it in your closet with the top button. So I think I will do that because otherwise you can see here, then it just, it bends already. Just a small Okay. Ah, so then, oh, I left the pattern downstairs. I've shown it to you. The A-line dress by the assembly line. And I finished that. And it's here on my mannequin. So this is the A-line dress by uh, the assembly line. I got the pattern from Merchant and Mills. They are in England, so you do have to pay for shipping, but I don't know if there's an American supplier for their patterns or not. Uh, I love um, Draper's Daughter is where I got it from. Draper's Daughter in England. I love their fabrics. I love their aesthetic. I just, I just love it, and I don't know. I haven't looked hard enough to find patterns available in the U.S., but whatever, these are my hobbies, and if I have to pay extra shipping, I pay shipping. 
Um, so I made it with a Robert Kaufman Essex Linen Metallic. So it kind of is a uh, navy indigo linen with gold metallic threads in it. Um, my favorite thing about it is how the collar stands up. This is really attractive when you wear it because this stands up and goes around your neck and creates a nice attractive space with your collarbone there. So I highly recommend it. Um, the pattern also does come with a version without sleeves. I really, really almost did this without sleeves. Oh gosh, I don't know. The thing is, is that this is all the fabric I have if I take the sleeves off, I need to cut into these for the facings. I don't know, I was really torn. I don't know. I almost like it better without sleeves, but it, it is very nice. It's very nice without sleeves. Um, you can wear it with the belt. I don't know, I'm really not into this super baggy A-line kind of thing. As you know, I kind of like my things a little more tailored and fitted, but it is extremely, um, it looks very nice without the belt also. And it also has pockets, both sides, which have to have pockets. Um, so the pockets are great. So the pattern is extremely well written. I was really worried about when I got into this section um, if I'd be able to do it well enough or I had to read the instructions a number of times to make sure I understood but really once I got it it was really not difficult um, very clean very nice I do not have to redo anything and I am back up to my standards of construction um, so you can see it's very pretty very pretty and because this is linen, when I do put it on, the, the pockets are stiff, so they kind of stick out like this when I cinch it with the belt. However, I'm thinking that uh, once it gets washed a number of times, and this has not been washed since I made it, I'm pretty sure I washed the fabric before I sewed. Pretty, I, always, I usually always do. Um, so I'm sure it has been washed, but I think that this will get softer as it's worn as linen does and the drape will just improve and um, it won't stick out like this when I cinch the belt. I might wear this for my daughter's graduation, so we shall see. We have another graduate in the house. She and I were just in Knoxville, Tennessee last weekend, um, or this past weekend, for um, a campus visit which was very nice, so she's, she's almost decided. So we're all waiting on pins and needles to see where she will go. And she's interested in nutrition science, and they have a very strong program there, and uh, they cater to dietary uh, niche, needs uh, such as hers. Um, no dairy, um, just screws up her digestion, things like that, but anyway, so um, she's an extremely clean eater and they do offer choices. The dorms were gorgeous, Twice, much larger than any dorm I've seen at another college. Um, so we'll see, keep you posted. All right, those were the finished objects for sewing. Next up, and I might have shown this one before, I'm going to do this one, Merchant Mills, the Camber set. And um, I don't know, I'm toying with the idea of making a muslin first because you can see on the model it's quite baggy and you know, not a lot of shaping going on here. And I really would like a little more of a waist shaping. So I'm probably going to do a muslin first just to play around with that and get the proper shape that I want. And then use the muslin as the pattern. Uh, but again, I have this on hand, so I'm going to use it. I'm trying to use garment fabrics that I have on hand first before I place an order. <laughs> um, so again, 
standard linen. This is Robert Kaufman um, yarn dyed linen. Not sure of the color, it might be charcoal. But uh, especially working in the flower shop next summer um, with some tights and my clogs with this, maybe a long sleeve t-shirt under it because the flower shop is cold. Cold. I wear my wool sweaters in the height of summer because it's so cold in the flower shop. Um, anyway, so that is on deck for sewing. I got a couple of, again, I mentioned I really like the aesthetic of Merchant and Mills, so I picked up a couple of their books. The third one I sent back, it was more of a beginning sewing book and it had a lot of projects in it. Out of the 12 or so projects in the book, there was one I would have made, so I sent it back. Um, but they have a little book, um, Sewing Skills. Um, a lot of this stuff I knew, but it was a nice refresher. It's nice just to be reminded of why you need to take the time to do these things, which obviously last year I wasn't taking the time to do things. And then this one, Merchant and Mills Workbook. All season wardrobe. This is a nice thick book. It has a number of garment patterns that I do want to make and all the patterns are here in the book. Um, so let's see, and they go through some beginning, not beginning sewing, but there are some jackets in here that are really baggy that I'm just not gonna make, like grandpa style baggy, sport coat type style. Um, that I will not make, but pretty much everything else. This, yeah, definitely wanna make that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, There's some tank tops. Anyway, um, pretty neat books, some shorts, some pants. I would like to try to make these trousers. I've never made pants. That's one thing I have never made. So there's these trousers and you can also turn them into shorts. So I definitely would like to try to make those. So I really like this book. So if you're into, interested in getting into um, just clean lines, modern, just simple uh, sewing, I would highly recommend these patterns, especially if you're a beginner, because the patterns are extremely, extremely well written, um, very easy to follow along. So if you're interested in sewing, give them a try. Oh, and I have some new fabrics. Oh, this reminds me of the quilt. I don't have it here. It's only the third time I think she's barked this whole episode. And, um, but I did take a video, so I'll try to put that in now. Okay, so I'm not gonna <coughs> podcast, excuse me, like I thought before Christmas, so I need to show you this now before I wrap it up and give it away. But it is finally finished. I'm quite happy with it. It lays flat. It's a little more square than I wanted. It was supposed to be a rectangle, but uh, really happy with it. So yeah, pretty much, don't, no, 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 storm, get off. No, off, get off. No, don't walk across it to get off. <laughs> so one of my favorite things is to wash a quilt. So it's been washed, it's dry. Quilting turned out really well. I'm glad I went with that pattern instead of just straight lines. See, there's a problem. <laughs> the X does not. But we're going to ignore that part, aren't we? And the binding's hand sewn. I do use a machine on the top side, and then it's hand sewn on the back. And then look, this is the back. Could that not be any more perfect? Anna Maria Horner Conservatory Fabric. 
tree, the deer. The quilting looks awesome on the back. So yeah, there you go. Again, pretty much everything had to be done twice. I had to make the top twice. When I went to sandwich the quilt, the quilt shop cut my batting wrong, so I had to go back to the quilt shop for a proper size batting. Luckily, the machine quilting went smoothly, and then I was hand sewing the binding on and realized that one side of the quilt had a problem with the bobbin thread, so I had to re-sew. Luckily, it was only one side. I had to take out my hand stitching and re-sew, but it was only just one side, so that was good. And there we go. Finished well in time for Christmas. Um, but here was the background. Isn't that beautiful? So these are fabrics for Fat Wool Co. bags. Uh, this is Anna Maria Horner um, Conservatory, which these are a group of designers uh, that she has curated. I'm pretty sure she's in charge of it. Um, but they all kind of go along. This has a bunch of panels. Oh my gosh. Oops, sorry. Sorry, Storm. Oh, I just can't stand it. Look at these colors. This is one of my favorites. Isn't that phenomenal? I should make a shirt. Okay, so there's that panels. This is the green version of the quilt back. So this was a set of a colorway. Here's a mauve version of the deer. Oh, and this one is so pretty also. So new bags coming this spring for Fat Wool Co. I also have a design in my head for a bag that does not use all of this printed fabric, so stay tuned for that. It's still in my head on how I want it to function. So I keep thinking about that, planning it in my head. And I'm gonna need to start to look for some of the supplies I'll need. And then I'll have to make one. And then I'll probably uh, want to send it out for a review just to get someone's opinion. Anyway, that, that's it for sewing. Now the last thing I wanted to talk about is gardening. So I showed you a little bit of my garden last year. Um, definitely this year because, and that was one of my um, uh, reasons for changing my podcast name because uh, I'm definitely gonna be doing a lot more gardening this year, especially on the, sorry, the San Pellegrino was bubbly. And uh, I think I've had a vegetable garden 20 years. Yeah, probably at least 20 years. And um, so I'll go into more of that this year. Um, a few years ago, I had a pumpkin patch up at the farm across the road. We, we filled up my husband's truck and my Yukon full of pumpkins. And then I haven't had pumpkins since. So this is going to be the year of the pumpkin. I love my heirloom pumpkins. So I've already ordered all my seeds. Um, I'm hopefully gonna be ordering a greenhouse. 
Um, talking to a couple companies right now. This is for seed propagation, lengthening the season. Um, that we have had winters with four feet of snow on the ground and we've had winds as high as 65 miles an hour. Now where I want to put the greenhouse is mostly protected from those high winds, but still, um, you know, when we get those really high winds, you almost feel like the house go, get lift, you know, that just stretches on its joints and then settles back down when the gust, the wind dies down. But anyway, so it's, of course, in my mind's eye with the greenhouse, I've been watching a lot of British gardening shows. And of course, they're zone eight and don't get snow and the ground rarely freezes. You know, like we get three feet of frozen ground. The frost line is four feet down, I think here. And, um, and so they have beautiful single pane glass greenhouses. And that's in my vision of what I want. Well, that's, if I only want to use it in the summertime, for sure. But no, I want this to actually be a workhorse. And so anyway, working on that. Because otherwise, I annoy everybody because the sunniest room in the house is down below this one in our workout room. And I fill the whole floor with seed trays. Well, then everybody gets annoyed because when they go to work out, they have to spend five minutes taking all the seed trays out. So that should be a big seller point for me for getting a greenhouse. So, yeah. So I've ordered my seeds. Yeah, and working for a florist last season has got me all crazy excited to grow more cutting flowers around the house. So I've got loads of flower seeds. So I need space for seed starting. And I love to, I only grow heirloom tomatoes. Ooh, the best pie pumpkin, winter luxury pie. Hands, to, oh, so here's one of my new flowers. Cosmos, look at that color of Cosmos. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? These, Bells of Ireland, I've never grown them and I was aware of them, but learning how to use them in uh, arrangements. Oh, they're, they're one of my favorite things to arrange with. Got some hot peppers for the family. Some new green vegetables I've never had before. Lots of tomato, ooh, butterfly weed. And I just ordered some um, Midwest wildflower seed, a whole pound of it. And we have a, of course, I'll show you later this, this summer uh, when I do more gardening tours. Um, there's basically a steep incline up to the main road that goes by. Look at these poppies. And um, I want that, right now it's just weeds and sumac and really ugly. And I thought, well, for goodness sakes, I'm going to cover that with wildflowers. So one of my favorite pumpkins, Gelo de Signe. Get de Signe? Gelo de Signe. Um, really super warty. Everybody comments on it when they see it. Some zucchini. This one looked interesting. I've never grown this one. Thai, Thai Ray Ka. Thai Ray Ka Talk. That one looked pretty interesting. Oh, for the family, my husband and my youngest daughter love hot stuff, like really hot. So we got some scorpion peppers. Um, this kale is supposed to grow like six feet tall and the leaves are huge. Apparently you can have one meal off one leaf. So we'll try that. My absolute favorite pumpkin, um, you might see it as the Cinderella pumpkin. It's called the Rouge Vif, Vif des Temps. Rouge vif, rouge vif des temps. Uh, nice flat, some beets, some peas. Let's see, some lettuce. Oh yeah, and I've been on a quest for years and I've never been successful to grow the giant pumpkin. So if I get my greenhouse, I can have flowers on the plants by the time I plant them out in the garden in May, end of May. In northern Michigan where we live, don't even think about planting your garden like up across the road in the big open field before Memorial Day. You're, it's just, there's no point. You're going to get hit by frost, wind, whatever. 
and down at the house, it's very protected, so I can get things in the ground before that. But if I want to grow these giant, giant pumpkins, like I'd like the biggest pumpkin I've grown, my husband needed someone to help him to pick it up, I think. So we're guessing it was well over 200 pounds. But I want to get even bigger. Ooh, look at these really red carrots. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna try some red celery. Ooh, I thought these um, were pretty coneflowers. Oh, look at those. Black Magic Cosmos. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at these poppy. Calendula, aren't those pretty? Never, well, we do have flocks. We have some flocks somehow down on this side of the house. It's a, not the prettiest pink, it's kind of an, um, kind of an obnoxious taffy pink. I don't, I don't, it's not a soft pretty pink, but I thought that would be pretty in arrangements. Oh, for some reason I have two pink celeries. This one looked, whoops. This one looks cool. Big white flat pumpkin. Let's see. Kale, charging. Oh yeah, look at this one. Giant show king. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, and here's another thing. No. Yep, here it is. So because I'm interested in French vegetable gardening, I've been, um, there's a book I have, The Art, I think I've re recommended it before, The Art of French Vegetable Gardening. And uh, they talk about, these gardeners she interviews talk about the Charente melon. It's a French heirloom melon. And uh, they say that when it's in season and ripening, you can smell it ripening in the fields as you go by. And I have been growing this melon for 10 years now. Can't smell a thing. They really don't taste that, and the people just, they rave at the sweetness and how wonderful. Well, of course, I'm not in southern France, so that's your first clue that it's not going to be the same. Um, but if I have a greenhouse, I can grow these in pots, keep them in the greenhouse, and create a trellising thing so they can grow, because that's what we don't have enough of, is the heat and the sun. So if I have a greenhouse, this is my goal, is to walk past my greenhouse and <gasps> smell the melon. Oh my goodness, the French were right. <laughs> but, okay, so those are the seeds I have on hand that I've ordered this year. The stranger the tomato, the better. I can't be bothered to grow early girls, better boys, all the normal standard canning tomatoes. I don't know, that's boring. So it has to be interesting, different, something that nobody else grows. And um, so gosh, so yeah. Um, so this year, you know, uh, if you watch WTF Knitting Levi, his latest podcast, he talks about his 2020 goals, a very inspiring episode. I highly encourage you to watch that. And um, <clears throat> uh yeah, he's got some serious goals, so I'm, I'm rooting him on. <laughs> um, my, I've got goals to, that I've already started on is uh, whittling down the stash. And um, as far as that, I'm getting my groove on with sewing. I have the new bag idea I'm working on um, that hopefully will come to fruition. I'd like to start that this coming week. Um, and uh, some garment sewing. Um, because I work for florist, I've got an idea for a gardener's apron, maybe with a nice heavy duty waxed canvas. So that's in my brain also with some nice leather straps, or uh, yeah, straps, straps, yeah. And um, so that's kind of knocking around in my head. So that's for sewing, and we're getting, yeah, we're definitely turning on the gardening and um, the seed starting. 
uh, won't be starting starting seeds until April, which is after spring break. I have started them earlier, and I had someone come to the house to water them and check on them, and that was kind of a pain. And and they're really where we live. There isn't any point in starting them that early because then you try to they're ready to go outside, but it's too cold, and then you end up stunting the plants anyway because they were started too early and you can't put them outside yet. So it completely depends on the season. Um, and uh, so definitely would love to get a greenhouse up and running late this winter so that I can use it this spring. And I'm all about the flowers this year and growing. I've got dahlia bulbs coming and I've got tulips planted out in the garden and garlic. So those will be coming up this spring. And uh, so yeah, it's exciting. Just uh, a new year, new decade getting re-inspired again to get excited about gardening, um, uh, sharpening up my sewing game and not fooling around with all these silly sloppy mistakes anymore, um, which is not like me. Usually I'm pretty, pretty on with the sewing. Uh, Roberta Ray Fibers, you'll see us at uh, yarn stores, or stores, yarn fiber fairs, yarn festivals. Um, I'm on the board for the Tip of the Mitt Fiber Fair, and so that is June 6th and 7th, 2020, in Petoskey, Michigan. So come on up and join us for that. If you are a vendor, a fiber-related vendor, we do have a few spots left. Um, so you can find the application and email, and I'm the vendor chair, so you can email me if you're interested in being a vendor. We do have a few spots out in the barn left. Um, it's a nice barn, cement floor. It can be cold if it's cold. We did start out in the middle of May and froze our bippies off. Uh, now we're in the first weekend in June. It is Northern Michigan, right on Lake Michigan. You never know, it could be 85 degrees, it could be 40. <laughs> um, so yeah. I'm um, glad to be podcasting with you again. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, one of Levi's goals was to um, get up to, I think, 2,500 subscribers. Uh, 250 would be great for me. <laughs> We're hovering at 106, so whatever. You're welcome. You're welcome. Subscribe, don't subscribe, whatever. This is a lot of fun, and um, uh, hello to returning viewers and uh, my friend in Harbor Springs and mom and Levi. So anyway, um, yeah, share this podcast if you have friends with, that you think would enjoy it. Um, and happy crafting, and you're always welcome at Charlotte's house. Wow. That's kind of a cool uh, tagline. Yeah, you're always welcome at Charlotte's house. <laughs> Bye. Hey, the dogs did not wrestle. That's it. That's the training. They're exhausted from their training. Okay. Oops. Okay. Bye.